Hi, everyone. Welcome to the uh, a special Thursday episode of the Timing Research Analyze Your Trade, uh, episode number 165 for July 8th, 2021. My name is David Cosmeter. I'm the creator of TimingResearch.com, and today we will be discussing your trade ideas. Uh, we are recording this at 4 p.m. Eastern time, and today I have arranged for Sunny Harris to join us, and you should be seeing her screen right now. And the option professor is back to moderate, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to him. Okay, thanks a lot, and welcome everybody. We had a very big, exciting day here today, so I'm sure uh, Sunny's going to enlighten us to a lot of things that are going on currently, and then maybe what to expect after things settle down. So it's going to be a very, very exciting show here uh, going over this, because uh, obviously the timing of this is uh, very important because the volatility has picked up so much. Uh, before we get started, though, um, a lot of people are already aware of Sunny Harris, but uh, some are not. So Sunny, before we get started, just a quick background on yourself and what's going on down at your company. Oh, goodness. Um, my background's about 30 minutes long, uh, <laughs> option professor, sir. Yeah, you bet. <laughs> uh, I've been doing this for 40, almost 41 years, and so I've got a lot of history, and that's exactly what it is I want to share with people is, you know, I've, I have been actually trading for 40, almost 41 years. Um, I also program easy language and a few other things, and um, I've created my own proprietary indicators, which tell me pretty much exactly where the market's going. And uh, that's what I'm going to share today. That's My great, yeah. education is I'm a PhD mathematician, a photographer, and a computer scientist. So you certainly are not unfamiliar with numbers and all the different things that go along with it. And at the end of the day, that's what this stock is all about, is following the numbers, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. Well, we've got a list here of a variety of companies, so we're going to certainly hit all different ones here. I see uh, all different sectors being represented, so let's jump right in here. And obviously, the big kahuna is uh, Apple, and that's number one stock here. So, uh, do you want Apple, me to do that, or do you want me to give a little of my presentation? Or um, well, yeah, presentation. you want to you want to start out with that? Um, I kind of do. I want to run through my history a little bit, but I more than that, I want to run through how I construct a chart. Yeah, your methodology, your methodology is what you're thinking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I want to show people what I do. Exactly. So I've got that on a PowerPoint and uh, uh, I want people to know that we can stay as long as they want to today. We're not limited to an hour and I'll go as long as you want to go. Sure. Okay. And like I say, the, your methodology is really the key here because then your methodology, once it's understood, it's all about right. application. Exactly. And it reveals everything once you understand how to do it. Yep. All right, so let's start out with uh, how you go about uh, doing your process. All right, and I'll kind of go through this fast because I know people are going to walk, want to watch on the recording and then they can always pause or speed up. And of course, we start everything with my theme song. We have to do that, which is, can you hear that? Uh, <laughs> just, little, I can just, hear a little bit faintly. Yeah, yeah faintly. Uh, it's, on, it's, yeah, it's on the wrong monitor. So it's, it's really, uh, you're in the money. Oh, one, of my okay. students, uh, one of my students uh, composed a honky tonk of that for me many years ago, and I've just used it ever since. So, as I said, it's an open ended session. Oh, I'm gonna um, and... We're still seeing your chart. Do, do you have a, a PowerPoint? My chart? Yeah, we're you seeing are... uh, your charts the... on all the different stocks, but uh, do you have a PowerPoint you're putting up? The yeah, test. how did that not show up? It says I'm screen sharing. Yeah, but it's it's sharing the trade station window trade station. can she stop one and start the other yeah you'll have to find the zoom menu and stop the screen share actually i can uh, okay, have like a, we'll go stop uh, share okay yeah okay so that stopped it now what do i do to get powerpoint back and then hit the uh share screen button again? again yeah mm -hmm. where did that go share uh, screen yeah you left. got it and then let's find the powerpoint there we go Okay, it's loaded. And now I have to move there. Okay, yeah, now I see the. See it now? Uh, this is an okay. open ended session. Yeah. All right. So we're going to keep analyzing symbols and answering questions until we're done. And that's as long as, as you guys are willing to stay and moderate and the audience is still interested. And I'm going to give my contact information first because we may be going through charts till six o'clock tonight, my time. Mm -hmm. So here's the stuff. And these are actually hyperlinks. So if you get a recording of it, you can click on the links. 
First thing I want to do is recognize a dear, the loss of a dear friend of mine, Murray Ruggiero. Uh, he died last month uh, of a very short bout of cancer. At, I think he was 57. So it's way too young to go. And he's probably the best technical mind we had on the planet at that point. So he, he really contributed a lot to our industry. And I'd like to recognize that by um, helping his wife out. She's a severe type one diabetic and is in and out of the hospital all the time. So if you wouldn't mind, you know, let's pay Murray back by helping his wife. So there's a GoFundMe page right there that's linked. And if you can't click on the link, of course, you can go to moneymentor.com, which is my website. And at the top is the tribute to Murray. Thank you for letting me do that. Oh, you bet. So question, if I'm a trader, why do I educate? Why do I bother? selling stuff or teaching other people because I love to help novices. I love to be a millionaire maker. I love to see the light come on in people's eyes, but I make my money trading, not by selling other things. So, you know, there are a lot of people who say they're traders, but they don't trade and they teach trading, but they don't trade themselves. And uh, I've got my neck out there on the line every day. So that's why I like to help. And when I started, nobody helped me out. Nobody uh, had anything to say to help me learn how to trade. So I just started by keeping copious notes of everything I was learning. I kept a black book of all my contacts and their information, which became Traders Catalog and Resource Guide, uh, which is a magazine that I published for eight years. And I read everything I could get my hands on and I went to every seminar, including all the tag seminars. And I bought every course and strategy. And then I've got a little $900 strategy. So remember now, 40 years ago, $900 was worth more than it is now for sure. And I bought, uh, I, this guy guaranteed the strategy. And the way he guaranteed it was to say, if you trade it for a year and you lose money, I'll give you your $900 back, which <laughs> kind of a bogus guarantee once you think about it. But I bought it and it was a little 10 page booklet which I'm thinking, oh boy, I thought I was getting software. So it's a 10 page booklet. And all it said was, when there's the divergence between the RSI and the stochastic and price, buy or sell, depending on which way the, the uh, divergence went, which was ridiculous, you know, but, oh, thank you for posting the GoFundMe page. So that's how I wasted $900 on that. And I bought lots of people's systems. Uh, so I wrote Trading 101 with all the notes and all my resources and everything a beginner needs to know to get started. And then later on, Wiley and Sons had me revise it. So it became getting started in trading. So don't buy them both. If you want to buy a book, don't buy both of them. My passion is in helping beginners and intermediate traders. And this talks for traders who have not tried trading or haven't traded much and want to learn or people, I didn't put this one in there, are people who are losing money and want to actually make money. I had a guy the other day tell me that he makes 6,000, no, he makes $5,000 and loses six every week. <laughs> so this is for beginners of both types and for traders who should become systemized. And of course, for folks who wanna know how I trade. And I've been trading the same way for a, a long time. One of the things that I say is, if you're doing it right, trading is boring. If you're getting excitement out of it, you're probably doing the wrong thing. So the reason I, the only reason I trade is to make money, not to show that I'm smarter than the market, not to show how much math I know, not to be excited. I trade to make money and that's the only goal. So I trade futures and stocks and ETFs and crypto, but I do not trade options. Sorry, Jim. <laughs> I, I only know how to lose money with options. So I gave that one up. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself quickly, but first I'm gonna show you real quick how I trade. So I trade the S&P futures contract, the E-mini on one in five minute charts. So that's really fast. And I probably trade 20 times a day, every day. I also hold long-term stock holdings. That means a, a week or more is long-term to me. And I read the chart patterns on daily charts in order to do that. I do trade ETFs. I have a few of Kathy uh, Woods ETFs and I do trade a little bit of cryptocurrencies and I'll show you what I see with the crypto right now, just to get you excited. 
So here's Bitcoin. You can see how it went along forever. Can you see my mouse, people? David, can you see my mouse? Yeah, we can see it. Yeah. Okay. So it goes along flat, 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 and all of a sudden starts taking off, corrects, uh, goes on, it's really jagged going up, and then turns around and comes back down. This orange line right here is one that I drew back here on this blue dot. So back in the beginning of 2021, I drew a horizontal line, which by June, got it, the market turned around, came down and hit that horizontal line. I call the lines that I draw attractors because they tend to attract price like a magnet. Uh, Fibonacci lines are also attractors. Moving averages are attractors. Anything where the market reverts to the mean and comes back to that as, as if it were magnet, magnetic or electric, that to me is an attractor. So. There's the crypto. We knew long, long before that happened. And actually, if you, where do I get a, here, I'm going to get a line if I can, annotate. Uh, annotate, draw a line. All right, so if you notice this stuff on the bottom, the golden, red, purple, and green, that's my DMAH indicator, which gave me a short signal right here. Okay, so. If you had my DMAH indicator, you would have been short through this entire move down. Okay, now what do I do? I'm not real good at this presentation stuff, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, close the annotation, do I have to do that? Yeah. Now, this is the disclaimer that all of we who trade in the markets or teach people to trade in the markets, what's going on here? Mm, hang on. That's not it either. I'm worried about that purple line right there. How do I get the purple line off? David? I'm not sure. I think it's in the slide itself. OK, well, we're just going to ignore it. Now I have to close the annotation. Hang on. OK, quick overview. There. So I was number one traders two years in a row. Um, First year was 365% profit. And I think yeah, the next one close to me there was 142. So 365 versus 142 is really, really still very good. It's better than most professional traders ever dream of. And that was with Sunny Bands and my DMA. So I will show you how I do that. There's my degrees. I've been programming for 52 years and program and trading for 40. I was a systems programmer for Lockheed. If you know programming, you know what systems programmer means. Uh, I helped found a little company called ISCO that was the world's leader in computer graphics software. And I retired when I was 30. Uh, I gave my millions at that point to money managers, which was a bad idea because, well, I didn't know anything about finance. I didn't know anything about trading. So I figured they must know because they're the pros, right? So I gave to them. Within the first three weeks, they'd lost $75,000. Now, 40 some years ago, that's a lot of money. Uh, so they said, give me some more money, give me some more money, uh, we'll do better. So it took them another week to lose 50 more. So I said, well, I can do that badly on my own. I'm gonna take my money back. And what they were doing is trading futures. And I said, I will never trade futures again. <laughs> now that's all I do. What I, what I did to learn is I read 117 books, and now I've read over 400 of them on trading, not, not just fun books, but trading books. I have an enormous library of trading books, and I love them. And I did not enter a single trade for the first year of watching the market. So as a consultant, which I do do consulting, I love to teach people to get to trading successfully. So I've been rated consistently in the top 10 consultants by Stocks and Commodities Magazine. There I was third. Um, I've written five best-selling books. I'm just gonna zoom through these for you. I'm working on grading the gurus right now. I've written articles for Stocks and Commodities, Futures, Active Trader, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of articles and more. Uh, here are the books. And this last one, using Easy Language 9.6, I wrote with Murray Ruggiero. 
And I wrote a book with my friend, Linda Blair called Going Vegan, but that doesn't count for trade. Then this is the magazine. These are bit mapped images, but this is the magazine that I was publishing for eight years, which just about everybody had. When I went to Chicago, it was cool because they had these magazines all collected on their desks. So what I want to know what you want me to finish next. I've started a lot of books. I got a lot of ideas to share, but I'd like to know what you want me to write so I can address it and get finished instead of just thinking about these things. So if you'll click there, you can click here to vote and it'll bring up a, what do you want me to write next thing on Money Uh Oh, is that, my... is that on your site? Cause the, cause they can't actually click on the, uh, presentation yeah um, they can go to the they okay. can go to the website and click there though yeah why can't you click here i can well, yeah but it, you can't on through your the, side uh, yeah through the the people who are watching uh, yeah uh, those mm -hmm. of us watching i mean i thought they would be the, uh, okay no the click yeah just doesn't translate so all you have to do then is just go to money mentor and uh I think it's under books and articles, but I'll, I'll make sure it's uh, available easily. Okay, if you go to Quips, see up here on my, on my website, it says Quips. So if you click there, you can see the hundreds of uh, things that people have said about the books that I write and the things I've taught them and how many millions of dollars they're making now that they've got sunny bands. I have a Facebook page. Uh, I do have a, a Sunday night free newsletter that I give out. All you have to do is opt in for it because I can't just send it to a bunch of people. So if you opt in for sunny side of the street, then you'll get these things on a Sunday night basis. Otherwise, I post to Facebook every now and then when I feel it. So go to Facebook, look for Sunny Harris, or you can opt in to the sunny side of the street. I call for rising markets when other people are waiting for crashes, and I call for crashes when other people are buying. So I, I am an independent thinker, let's put it that way. <coughs> Hang on a second. Mm. I'll say, technical analysis of Stocks and Bodies magazine, I think is probably the only trade, well, no, Trader's World is left, but they're not in paper anymore, they're online. And the Stocks and Commodities is, actually a physical magazine still, which is kind of unusual. But at the end of every magazine, they have a futures liquidity chart, which you see here. And the one with the most stars going over to the right, 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 right and then off the page is the S&P E-mini. That is probably the single reason that I tried the E-mini in lieu of everything else. Uh, anything else? Uh, this because it's the most liquid you can get in and out with very little, if any, slippage. Uh, and there's one thing I always say, and this, you, you can't sell it, don't buy it. Don't buy something you can't sell. The 10-year T notice, the next most liquid, then the NASDAQ e mini is down at seven. I would never trade it down at seven, even though it's still got liquidity. And the e mini Dow is down at 19th. So like I said, don't buy something you can't sell. You'll get stuck holding it and then you'll get slippage which can eat away a lot of profit. Uh, anything that you order, I'm gonna put my special up front because we might just keep talking forever. Anything you order before the end of this week is gonna be 30% off. Or if you wanna wait till, I don't know, no, that's 10 more days, it'll be 20% off then. And that includes my consulting and mentoring time. If you want a free seven-day trial of any of my indicators, just email me. They're for TradeStation and MultiCharts. I will need your customer number in order to tailor it for you, though. Uh, eh, no, I don't have a trading room. I've had a lot of people ask me, why can I join your trading room? And no, because I make my living trading, not selling subscriptions. And so... If I'm trading 20 times a day really fast for six and a half hours, I don't have time to talk about it. All I have to do is make the analysis of trade. I trade way too fast to have people following along, but you can do it just like I do. You don't need to follow me. So you license the two indicators and you can trade just like I do. But I'd rather teach you to fish than to give you a fish. 
So I've got a sunny summer special going on only for this audience today. I'm not going to offer this to the, somebody else. So for one hour of consulting and mentoring with me, it's normally $495 an hour because I don't, I don't just, well, I don't just teach this stuff. I actually do it. I actually trade. So I know what's going to work and what doesn't, even before you give me my, your idea most of the time. And I like to teach people to, to make money. But this week only, one hour is going to be $97. You can ask all of your questions. You can pick my brain for a full hour, normally nearly $500 just for $97. So email me on that. And that's for new customers only. So here's how I chart. I start. I chart with, start with a chart. This is the E-mini on a one-minute basis. So you can see how I trade. Okay. And then I add horizontal lines, which again, I call attractors. And you can see there at the top how this, the reason I drew it is because price hits it, hits it, hits it, hits it on the top. And down at the bottom, I eyeball this and I see a place here that it hit it. I see a place here that it was magnetic. It went above and below and above and below. Likewise over here. So I put horizontal lines on. In fact, la the last issue of Traders World Magazine, I wrote an article called Horizontal Lines Are Your Friend. Next, I put Fibonacci lines on the chart and you can see where all the retracements are and how the price hits it over and over again and hits those Fibonacci lines. Next, I put sunny bands on the chart and that's an upper and a lower green band. And inside there's an upper and a lower teal band. In the middle, there's a gold and a purple moving average. Now that moving average is my dynamic moving average. That means it adjusts itself to the speed of the market. You don't have to give it inputs. It adjusts itself to the speed of the market and it will get out of the way when we're in sideways choppy periods because I found a long time ago that chop is the trader's worst enemy because you can make money in trends and give it all back when we're in a sideways whipsaw period. So this dynamic moving average was designed to avoid whipsaw and it's got some, some special math in there that I do that other people don't do and that's why it works. And then I add at the bottom, you see the purple and green, gold and red lines. Those are my dynamic moving average histogram, DMAH. And that, if you spread it out, you can see you get signals. So these lines, and I, I can teach you exactly what I do with these. These lines tell me when to go long and short. Okay, so now we're gonna analyze some symbols. And first I'm gonna do some symbols that people preloaded for me. They sent me some uh, symbols early. So I'm gonna do those, and then we're gonna go as long as it takes and people are still interested. So here we go. Here's the, these are the preloaded ones that people wanted to look at. And now then, how do I, I'm gonna stop sharing, bring up TradeStation again. Uh, where's the, there. And then I'm gonna start sharing again. <laughs> Which one, this one I think. No, laptop, this one. Okay, David, can you see that? Jim? Yep. Uh, yeah, we're back on okay, TradeStation actually. now. So here's where we go for, oh, no, no, before that, sorry, back up. I want to show you the Dow Jones, which is the overall market, because we're going to look at the overall and then we're going to look at specific stocks. So this one already has my PHW indicator, sunny bands, and the DMAH on it. At the bottom, it also has two other indicators. One is the traditional RSI, the real jaggy one, the traditional RSI. And the one that's smooth is my RSI that I have smooth using the same functions that I use to smooth the dynamic moving average. So you can see it's a lot easier to read. It's, uh, it's not just giving you false signals all the time. So here's what I do. I go drawing, horizontal line. That's the first place that stands out to me was this high before COVID. And you can see it almost hits it a couple of times, does hit it, goes above, comes below, goes above, almost hits it again, and then goes up. Now over here, at this end, we're in sideways nothingness. So uh, chances are we're going to go on up to the upside. That's my guess. And it's only a guess because nobody ever really knows. Chances are it's going to break out, but not before going on down. Let's see. Here we had 
one, two, three, four, five. So it'll probably hit down below at, uh, I can't read that, 33 something before it flies on out of there. And the reason I think it's gonna fly on out of there is because if I bring up the E-mini chart, it's the same thing, except it's not doing what the Dow is doing. This one's breaking out, so is the NASDAQ. They're both out and above everything. And we're gonna draw the Fibonacci lines right here on this and this. And you can see that the E-mini is right there at that line, but unlike the Dow, this one's out above it. Okay, so that's why I'm thinking that it's probably gonna continue on up for a little while. This, uh, let's see, drawing arrow. Okay, so this is gold. A lot of people ask me, and I do analyze gold in my Sunday night, uh, Sunday side of the street. So this one shows me that gold's going on down to 1670 or 1668. So looks to me like we've got further down the downside. And uh, as proof of that, let me spread this out and let's see what the signal is current. Oh, current signal's long. So if we go to drawing, vertical line, right here's where the system went short a little bit early, short gold. Short, 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 short. And then right here, it went long. So all this green shows me that it's gold is long at this moment. The other thing that I look at is my DMA has the center line has the uh, purple on top, gold on the bottom. That tells me short, okay? So I've got a buy signal on one side and a sell signal on the other, which makes me think it's gonna hit this DMA and then go down from there. So it's probably going to encounter some resistance right here. Uh, NQ, NASDAQ, you can see again how that one's far and above the, the Dow. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. It's a, well above the Dow and it's also above the E-mini. So right there's where it broke out, right in here, this area. It's been going up ever since. Probably because this is some kind of a little tech bubble or a tech, uh, some kind of a tech move. Now let's see, drawing here. So now let's, oh, and this is bonds. Bonds got a buy signal. Where's the vertical line? <coughs> Pardon me. We've got a buy signal in bonds right back here. Up, 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 up. I'm gonna ignore the real short-term moves like this one, the signals. And so it, it was short a little late right there. And then it went long again right here and it's been long up through that. With these, I don't call it a short signal unless I have lower lows or higher highs, which qualifies right there and then goes long again. So it's been long since this point. RSI is high, it's, uh, what does that say? It's above 80. And RSI can give a, a extended moves for long periods of time. The higher it is, and that, that we have a trend line, let's look at that, drawing trend line. So we have a, a nice upward trend line on the RSI itself on both high and low. So we've got some, a little space to move on up, I think, on that one. All right, now let's go through your symbols. Apple was the first one I had. I already went ahead and drew some of the lines on Apple, the Fibonacci lines and the uh, horizontal attractors. And you can see that it just broke out my long signal on Apple. Yeah, it was, it's already drawn. It was right there, close to that intermediate bottom. And we've, we've gotten 120, so 20 some points profit in Apple at that point. Do you want people to, ask questions while I'm on a chart, guys? Yeah, I mean, they can. Um, I'm looking uh, here. Uh, yeah, they can ask you on the, um, you know. Um, the chat? On the chat, right. On the okay, chat. that'd be great. Any questions you want, just feel free to ask. I yeah. do see that there's another symbol, DPC. Remind me of that when we come to the end of this list. Uh, so Apple. Looks like it has some more room on the upside. Oh, here's another horizontal line that's important. See this high right here? 
we are fast approaching that previous high that was what that looks like in January of this mm -hmm. year. Right. So as we approach that, we're going to encounter some resistance. We'll more than likely fall back from that line before it gets a second leg. So if we count this one, two, three, extended fourth, and then a fifth wave, that move could be over. It'd be very close to over. Uh, I love ARC funds, Kathy Wood stuff. So here's an ARC fund and you can see that um, she had from the beginning of the, well, since February this year, she's lost money as it's been going down. But if you look at it on the weekly chart, she hasn't lost so much money. She's just lost pro part of an enormous profit. Right. So I, I like her stuff a lot. I like this disruptive technology and innovation. I, um, quick thing, Sunny. I was looking at ARC uh, when it had a um, merging of the 50 and the 200 day average and it was right around 115, 116. On and, a weekly uh, or daily chart? Uh, this was on a, uh, I guess a one year chart. Okay. So, so I guess that would be, that'd probably be a daily then. And uh, okay. even now. We're looking, we're looking uh, at yeah. 50 and 200? Well, they, they were, the, yeah, the 50 and 200, they came together at 115, uh, 116. I can see the 200 day is still climbing at 118. And no, uh, no, would you daily. say that 118, 120 area uh, might be an area of support and might be good to trade against? Or what do you think? Well, that, yeah, it's just, it just almost hit that today. Yeah. So. One, two, three, four. Yeah, that's a good trade for up to the 140, 142, I think. Yeah, and it uh, coincides with the 200-day average, which is rising at mm -hmm. 118. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that, that's an interesting sidebar there. It is interesting. All this it's stuff a, is fascinating. It's a great is, profession. Is ARKG also in your uh, radar, the uh, genomic revolution? Because that's been uh, pretty popular too, huh? ARKG. Same story, same story. And, and, you know, look, I mean, I'm always looking at these horizontal lines, look where that lives. Mm -hmm. And then we've got another one that's, before I drop it, it's right about there. So it's at least got to move up that much. Yeah, these uh, tend to, because right now the 200 day and the, um, and the uh, 50 day on ARKG come in at around the 84 to 86 area. And some, mm -hmm. uh, these type of funds, you know, because they're so um, volatile, some, most of the time they spend so far away from their moving averages, when they mm -hmm. actually come back toward them, you have a lower risk entry level if you're going to mm -hmm. use those as exit points, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think you're right. You know? This and one, then when they draw a trend line across the bottoms here, uh -huh. it, it broke it to the downside today. Yeah. So that's interesting too. And, you know, I, I'm not unwilling to take losses uh, if i get in a trade and it's going against me i'm out of there oh, yeah, yeah. kick it out yeah yeah okay dropbox is an interesting one i thought that just kind of keeps going on up the problem is we've got this horizontal line right up here at the very tippy top almost where we are right now which is a 50 percent retracement from the covid crash so it's going to have some struggles right in here too, I think. And now we've still got the 50 and 200 day average on there. So if it went down to the average, if you use that as an attractor, it's got a long ways to go. Well, I mean, relatively, two or yeah. three points. Is, but it would be this, a fairly, fairly good. This yeah. next one that was on the list is Oracle. And there was a huge option purchase, a put option purchase yesterday. And um, the stock had a great run up towards 86, 87, where there was some mm -hmm. other call activity at 85. So they ran through the 85 strike. The guy who was in those calls made out. And then it uh, <laughs> looked like there was a hedge, um, a hedge going on because Oracle this year has gone from 53 to 88, 87. Wow. So um, does I don't Oracle... know how you, you know, this is kind of like baseball cards. I don't know how you guys know all these symbols. I mean, it's like, do you have the whole stock market memorized? Not memorized, but it seems like I am fairly familiar with a lot of them. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. amazing. I'm a specialist, you know. 
I, I like I said, I trade stocks on a long term portfolio and and I trade the E mini because it's yeah, in other words, you got to only got to remember one free. symbol. Yeah, you got one symbol to worry about, right? All I have to think about is one thing. Yeah, and, no, and and there's something like to be said, said for that for sure. Yeah, yeah. like I said, if, it, if you're doing it right, it's boring. Yeah. The idea is just to get money, money, money out of it and not worry about who's right. And then you don't have that out of the blue report on that one stock that you're involved in that didn't, they came out from left field. If it's in the S&P, it's going to be a muted effect. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, well, that's, anyway, what what is your what is your thing? Because this was on the list. What's your feeling on Oracle? Does it look like? Well, it I made... just I just drew a horizontal line over the most recent high. It, right. So it broke out above that. This is a daily chart. Broke right. out above it, pulled back uh, right to that line. This red dot shows where it is currently, which is a little above the line. Uh, one, two, three. It should. I'm counting Elliott waves. If anybody know what doesn't know where I'm going, one, two, three. Right. This one, two, nice big three wave should come back into here. I would guess. Was that eighty-two something maybe? Uh huh. And then fly on out. So the momentum is still quite good here. I think so. Yeah. Well, then let's look down below at my DMAH. We've got vertical line, short, 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 short long here short again here short 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 as long as we've got lower prices but now we've got higher highs right here so we go long again just long from there to there does your fibonacci <laughs> um, um uh, estimates uh, tell you a little bit about what a target might be above let's look we could go what was it at uh I didn't do it. Which way are we going? Minus? Yes. All right. So if we go minus 123, do I already have that? No, I said. Uh, yeah, let's try that. And that didn't do it either. Nah, it's not working for me right now. I wanted to ask you a quick question because you do have the 200 yeah. uh, day moving average up there. Mm -hmm. And do you feel that um, when these markets get extremely far away from that average, that um, you should be looking for the vulnerability to try to correct back towards that? Or in this environment with low interest rates and money printing, uh, these um, values can go way away from their averages and stay way away for years? Well, they can, they can. But the reason I call these things attractors is for the reason you just said. It does mm -hmm. tend to attract them back down to their moving averages, and then they fly out one direction or the other again, seeking new levels. But uh, right now, there's just so much money waiting on the sidelines to be invested yeah. in stocks right. that there's no reason technically for it to keep going that high. But there's so much money waiting, that it just does. You know, cybersecurity is really in the news with all these hacks. And yeah. so the uh, next one on the list is FireEye, which uh, was trying to get above that 22, but it just seems like it cannot get above 22, 23 right now. But, and today it got hit a little bit, but uh, is there a big move on the upside in FireEye, do you think? Because of- Well, uh, look, I, that's a pretty obvious horizontal line thing yeah. here. We've got, we've got this, we've got this down here that's, binding it so it's, it's like it's in a coil it's going back and forth back and forth back and forth across this coil building up momentum and pressure the entire time yeah and then up here uh, we've got a hundred percent retracement on the fibonacci line so how many times can it hit this channel one two three four five six seven who knows i mean that could just go sideways for the longest time because breakouts like this one back in the beginning of the year, this big one, often don't don't hold. Um, it's you know that you'll see that price go way up like that, and then it'll just go down here and just go around and around and around and not make it back up there for the longest time. I wouldn't I wouldn't be a buyer of this one until it breaks out of uh, twenty three oh four. 
Yeah. And then you'd have Personal momentum and then, then you'd be joining, you'd be joining a conga line rather than trying to hope that one forms. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, this next guy up is an, uh, a meme stock, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. So uh, having said that, you know, it's gone from 15 to 50, back down to 25, back up to 45. Now it's at 28. And I'm sure people that are trying to trade it are trying to figure out where it's going. So what do you think about Bed Bath & Beyond? Well, we've, we've got horizontal lines again. We've got a Fibonacci yeah. 23.6 retracement at 21, 21.32. We've got a line above again at 30. 395. It broke out of that, came back down in, broke out, came back down in again. Uh, let's see, one, two. Mm. It's got some room to go. If this is actually a one, two, which we never know until later, then this is the beginning of a one of a three wave. One, two, and then the three wave is up here at about 50. Well, yeah, it's where we had previous high. So I, it, it's got a short signal on my DMAH. The RSI is just moseying around at the center. Let's see, I I would wait until 32.88 on the breakout to, to, to trade that one. Yeah. Unless I were doing it on a short term. You yeah. know, I mean, I like I said, I look at everything so it's short term. Let's look at the, where's my mouse? I've got too many screens here. Oh, come on, mouse. There we go. Uh, if we take this back, then about the shortest I trade stocks is on a 15 minute. Let's see, on a 15 minute basis, there's just nothing going on there. Yeah. So rather uh, to wait to get momentum and a breakout and then join the party, I would. similar to the I other would. one. Yeah. Uh, this next one is a biotech, and uh, obviously it uh, had a very exciting news lately because it's gone from uh, 65 up to 120. Uh, it's a BHVN, Bobby, Harry, Victor, Nancy. Bio Haven Farm. Yeah. yeah. Let's look for just a second at this radar screen that I'm looking at. You see, I have sure. an indicator over here with the red, the purple, the gold, and the green highlighted. Yeah. Those tell me instantly, <clears throat> pardon me, which configuration my DMAH is in. Excuse me, I have to water. So, if it's gold and bullish, you'll see I have two parallel lines going upward. Mm -hmm. That tells me that stock's bullish and moving strong upwards or whatever. That's that's the one that you wanted to look at. Yeah. So it's gold, bullish, moving upward. And indeed it is. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five moves almost over. Yeah, it looks like it. 120.99 on that Fibonacci number. It's going to try to get that. If anybody wants to make a play for another five points, it's right there, I think. But the majority of the party has been done. Pretty much party's over. Um, how about a um, drug company, uh, Bristol Myers, BMY? BMY. Okay. Now let's see. The DMAH tells me that it's bullish, but it's changed direction. See, it was going up, now down. Mm -hmm. See the, the little symbol shows up, now down. So is it still, is this, this is Bristol Myers, you said? Yeah, it's hanging around the high right now. So it had a decent day compared to the tape. Uh, mm -hmm. The high has been about 68. It's at 68 and change, 66 and change. So it's hanging in there. But you see the dots red out here at the outside. That's yeah. That last bar was down. Yeah. Okay. And it's coming down. It's hitting the DMAH. Um, gold. See, it says the gold right there at the end of my chart. That tells me that gold is on top. So this is still a long signal here. Yeah. And over here, I don't have lower prices. So it's still a long signal there. It doesn't have the wide swings that these other moves have. Not it's as much. It, no. it's, yeah. it's entered this little congestion. People are afraid to take it higher kind of place. This next one I had uh, been very positive on uh, uh, earlier in the year when it was in the or last year when it was at eight or 10, uh, Freeport McMoran FCX. But uh, it has stalled out here in the what 45 range. Uh, they're copper. Copper. Okay. So you know everything. Yeah. Bearish. See, purple, bearish, two lines down. Okay. So it's been bearish during this entire period from, from right here is when I got the signal to go short. Yeah. 
See, that's a beautiful signal, isn't it? Yeah. And it's had a very long run. And if there is a slowdown in construction or the uh, infrastructure is not going to use quite as much, uh, then it could come into some problems. So that's, uh, yeah. and, you know, but it's gone from uh, 12 to 46. Though. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. 34, seven were. So, but look at this. We've got the short signal that came in right there. Yep. And over here, we've got a long signal. Prices have to go higher. They did go higher. They're still under the DMA. I mean, the, yeah, the DMA. Mm -hmm. So they need to break through that. And with a long signal right now, it's it's still possible. Yeah. And a break above 3738 would definitely be telling you it's happening. Yep. Yeah. Anything about when if I move this over, oh, I turn and see purple's on top, but I turned off the um, printing of the text. Normally, this thing will print a whole lot of text out here at the right hand side. And uh, It'll tell me what that value is, but it looks like mm, 37 and a quarter, maybe right here where the purple and gold are together. Yeah. So I think it's going to hit that and then turn on down, looks like. Yeah. Yeah. But if it were to get above those levels, it might be changing the landscape. Yeah. 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 Uh, we got a cheapy here, a WTI, and uh, it's a penny stock because it's under five dollars. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, it's gone from a dollar thirty-five to five fourteen, but it definitely has been under some pressure in the last uh, week or two. And if so, you look uh, here, it says bullish. It was has been bullish, but it's now turning down. So let's yeah. go see what the chart looks like. Yep, indeed, it was bullish, and now the chart's turned down. Yeah, and it just blew through that Fibonacci line. 61.8 line right but it out but it went back up the candle's blue it's an up candle so it went right past that 61.8 down and then back up and i've got sell signals all over the place over here and the rsi is coming down still we've got a down slope on the rsi uh let's see what that looks like over here like that It's not divergence, so, well, I guess you could call that divergence. So that would mean it's going down. Uh, you know, I had a question for you. I think I would be uh, a buyer on that one, Jim. Buyer, yeah, well, it's like buying an option. You know, it's a $4 mm -hmm. deal. So it's like an option that never expires until the company either goes broke or something, right? Right, right. I, I love them when they, get under, when, yeah, when they get under 10. $4, who cares? When they get under 10, uh, like, uh, you know, all these companies like, well, Freeport McMoran was trading at eight. You buy these companies underneath 10 bucks or five bucks. And, you know, if they're going to come back, they're going to come back. If not, it's like a long term option. Uh, but this I bought one, one years ago on my son's recommendation, and it was like a dollar 70 or something. He kept saying it's going to 10. It's going to 10. Yeah. Never did. It just went down and down, yeah. and down. Most don't. But at least, you know, you got a pretty limited uh, risk on the downside. Uh, right. One question for you, because on another broadcast, you had mentioned uh, the RSI, and then mm -hmm. you had mentioned, uh, I, th I don't know if it's your sunny bands or some, but you had some feeling about 60 and 40 on RSI. Oh, yeah. Whereas yeah, most, yeah. Pe yeah, most people like me uh, look at 50 as the barometer. If you're above mm -hmm. 50, you're in a bull market. If you're under 50, you're in a bearish situation. That's been my basic thought. But your thoughts were different in that you were using a 60 and 40. Could you well, explain use, that? Yeah, Could you yeah sure. I use 60 and 40 because of the works of Connie Brown, Constance okay. Brown. And mm -hmm. she's got a book out on technical analysis. It's, it's a little bit old now. But she makes a, a lot of sense when she uh, argues mathematically for those values that uh, really the major moves are happening at 60 and 40, not at 70 and 30. Which means that I'm just translating your thoughts, if I'm doing it correctly, that when the RSI is 60 or greater, you're going to get a more dramatic strength. And if it's at 40 or less, you're going to get more dramatic weakness. Absolutely. Uh, you that got it. And that's pretty Thank much you. it. Thank you for explaining. Yeah. Well, no, I'm a lay person and there are other lay people, uh, you know, yeah. listening. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. That's good. Yeah. And uh, and like I say, that's very, I, you know, that's a, I think that's a very big thing to, uh, to think about because, again, we are trying to get into the acceleration phases in either way, be they short or long. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, above 60, the, the probabilities of an acceleration phase uh, increases dramatically and likewise on the downside underneath the 40. So yeah. uh, if you just refrained from 
the middle area, uh, maybe maybe that's where the chop comes from more. I think so. Yeah. In other words, like well, you say, I mean, yeah. Let's let's take a look. If we're looking over here, and this is in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. And and this is uninteresting right through here. Right. Yeah. And then the green line down here is is the forty. So you can see as it goes below there, right? About here, we actually get a move. Yeah, Somebody I mean, asked yeah. on the chat, um, yeah. how important is the RSI smooth to my analysis? Uh, not overly. It's, it's one of the things I look at. You know, I've read so many books and I know the works of so many people that I have a lot of things come into my mind as I'm analyzing every chart. You know, I'm looking at all kinds of pat bar patterns and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm looking at MACD and ADX in my mind. I don't have them on my chart, but I have a lot of things that I'm aware of the whole time I'm trading. So the RSI is not by any means the most important. My Sunny Vance is the most important along with the DMAH. Those are the two things that uh, tell me everything I need to know. Uh, somebody said, "How? Uh, what am I using to plot those red and blue dots? Because of course those are pretty much perfect. Uh, and that's my PHW indicator and this is a research tool. It's it, these dots cannot possibly be printed at every one of those turns. So they're printed or plotted later, right? After it's clear that the move has been made by about three bars in, it gives you the red or blue dot. I use them, sometimes I use them as yellow dots. And But what I do with my PHW is it stands for potential hourly wage. And what I do is put that on there so I can tell if I'm making trades at the right place or not. I want to keep myself with those perfect trades. Uh, and I hope, well, I had a student one time that said, I, my Sonny, my problem is I overtrade. I said, all right, I want you to, his name was, what was his name? John. I said, I want you to take one trade a day until I talk to you next week. Okay, okay, I'll do that. Got with him the next week. I put, brought up his computer screen. My goodness, he had 20 or 30 trades during the day. None of them winners, but he was just trading. And then of course there's revenge trading where you trade because you just lost money and now you need to make more than that back. Um, and his chart was just full of trades. No, you need the trades to be where the red dot is and where the blue dot is, no matter what time frame you're working on. I mean, you know, if I change this to a five minute chart, I still have red and blue dots, right? But uh, I have that also on this radar screen up here. I have PHW. This is the yellow PHW total. So if I wanted to, I could sort this, double click. The most tradable thing is UNH. Potential of 1,200 points. So buy and hold would have been 223 points because if you trade it, it's 1,200 points. So that's that's what I do with this one is I sort them and just and look at who's tradable and who's not. I wouldn't trade WTI. It doesn't make a new enough moves up and down. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're looking for opportunity. Yeah, and that's that's what this yellow stuff does for me. It tells me the opportunity, and then the red, purple, gold, and green stuff tells me it, you know what I'm looking for is a stock that's just changed direction. So one with this like a V symbol or a hat symbol. So I'm looking at those symbols right there for opportunities. And of course you can sort by that too, see? So now I've got two bearish stocks together here that have just turned up, which are this one. Well, I didn't, oh, that's a five minute chart. That's why that looks like that. So this one has just turned up. It just got a buy signal right here. And that's because of this green and purple stuff. Okay, what else you got for me, Jim? I was gonna I was gonna ask you something that I've been watching. I don't know if anyone else is, but I think they probably are. Viacom, V I A C. They're having a big uh, talk over there in Sun Valley, and uh, they're one of the properties that have not been bought out yet. You know, MGM's been bought out, and you know all the other ones. Uh, but this thing, um, you know, just seems to be like you say in a very very tight window. Is there any indication that? It might, or is this just a fly-by-night that if you're lucky, they get a buyout, and if you're not lucky, it goes down? Yeah, 
that's more like it because earlier I said something about one of these thoughts that makes a fly a very big up move like that and it never comes back to it. If we yeah. put, let's put a Fibonacci on this and go from here to here. So it's, it's just right down around this horizontal line. It's just not doing anything. And so I would put an alarm on the, on this uh, 2360 retracement right here. Mm -hmm. And if it ever breaks out that, then I'm interested. And that is more uh, like in the 44 50, area, isn't it? 53.8. So if, if price got to 53. Oh, I got you. A I long got you. way between here and there. Yeah. But if it got to 53, something's cooking. And if something's cooking, it, and then that RSI gets then above 60. Then they could go all the way back up to 100. Yeah. There's a gap between 90 and 85 that uh, looks seductive, but uh, it could remain yeah. seductive. Well, you, you know, the Japanese say all windows must be closed. Right. So that's the thing that makes me attracted to it, to be honest. But uh, mm -hmm. what's not attractive is meandering for uh, three weeks, you know? Uh, yeah. But uh, if you and if you got to uh, sixty, if you got to fifty three from here, you probably would get that RSI above sixty, and mm -hmm. now you've got uh, momentum. You got the RSI in the right neighborhood, and you've got that gap up there. So you might have a. Well, if we look at these RSI, we do have kind of an up. Oops, let go. Kind of an uptrend going to the RSI, so that's a powerful sign. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I trade, I hold stocks for the long term. So and unless this one moves out, I wouldn't be a long term buyer of this. Yeah. I mean, I've even got a Viacom business not too far from here. And they look like a, like they're going gangbusters, but their stock's not doing anything. No, they unless probably they come out with something new. Yeah. Well, they got the streaming thing going, and mm -hmm. of course, they've got Paramount Studios. So the whole reason uh, that I'm intrigued by it is just uh, that it's one of the last properties that nobody's picked up yet. And you know, mm -hmm. people like Apple and and Amazon, you know, they've got money coming out of their ears. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, to get more content, if that's what they think they need. But then the other people tell me there's so much streaming out there; it's an oversupply. It is an oversupply, especially when you can watch anything you want a few minutes later on YouTube for free. Well, this next one is kind of a proxy for the travel industry, uh, to some people anyway. It's American Express, and people figure well, out, well... You don't have that on here. I can't do that one. AXP? Number 11? <laughs> I'm teasing you. Oh, 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 it's late in the day. It's late in the day. AXP. We've had oh, a long there day. It is. <laughs> there it is. Finally. Yeah, that's a nice, steady, just up and up and up. You know, that that really doesn't have anything but a trend line going from here to here you know that's just a beautiful move and yeah. if we put if we put a parallel trend line on it's not exactly parallel it's kind of squeezing so ooh, that could be a really interesting breakout it did come down see this little doji bar that's at the end there okay it's got uh two long candles and a little bitty body came down and touched the dma today so it's right here I would not be at all surprised to see that thing go right back up and touch that upper orange line, if not fly through it. And this one, you know what else is nice about this one, I think? Yeah, we've got some dividends on this one. So not only is it a nice stock, it's got a 1% yield, which you can't get in the bank. I don't know about and you, like I say, it's it's the card that travelers and entertainers use, and that's what people yep. are doing now. They're out there and spending the on... Yeah, and the people with a lot of money are the ones that have American Express cards. No doubt about that. Yeah. Uh, well, since they're out there spending money, let's go to the next one, which is PayPal, because they got to process these payments, right? Yeah, I love PayPal. Yeah, and we've got an, a line up at 308 on the top with a high back in February. Yeah, one, two, three. Uh, I'd wait for a little bit of a pullback and then fly on through that top line. Uh, we got a yeah. Uh, to be honest with you, it looks uh, it looks fine. And uh, you know, like I say, uh, them and Square are the new way uh, the new mm -hmm. wave of how to process payments. So you know, and it has to it, yeah, it has to be part of your uh, uh, payment portfolio. That's for sure. Along with mm -hmm. Visa and Mastercard. Um, 
The uh, chip shortage obviously has hurt a lot of people, but it hadn't hurt uh, yeah. AMD. So let's uh, look at AMD because that's the next one on the list, AMD. Well, let's go back and look at what that says on the DMA. It says AMD. Come on, one up. Bullish turning down. No, oh, that's because this last two bars. So they that's this one went right up. Oh, to yeah, they, they gave it up. Yeah, they gave it up. Yeah. Yep. One, two, three. There goes the four. And this was a sideways two and a sharp four. So now we've got a five up above 100 somewhere. I'd watch. See, now on this thing, if I were going to, if I were looking to buy this one, uh, I would put it on a 15 minute chart and then I would analyze the 15 minute chart and wait for it to turn up. And then I would buy and hold it for the for weeks to months, but I'd be waiting for this this fifteen minute chart to show me. The two hundred and the uh, fifty day are in the seventy nine to eighty three area. Is there mm -hmm. some uh, numbers around on that the daily area? chart? On the daily, right? And I'm just wondering out loud if that's a neighborhood to use as a line in the sand somewhere between oh, yeah. eighty and eighty three. Yeah, that's an attractor for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it it could easily fall on down to that but it won't be i won't have the elliott wave count right if it passes here now here so if it drops below that line i won't have counted it right so it it shouldn't drop below that is my guess oh and look how far across to the left that horizontal line goes touching everything all the way back and forth so that's probably where it's headed if it gets near 85 that's a good time to buy you know the banks have gotten hit because their uh, yielded uh, their steepening yield curve just went out the window so uh, b the next one is bmo uh which is the bank of montreal and uh, it had a big run but like all the banks it's uh, being chased out of the yard and uh, the question is is this the, the beginning of the end or is this a pullback to be bought uh, how does it look to you well it says bearish with double lines down. So let's go over to the chart. Yep, bearish with double lines down. We've got a sell signal back right there on the DMAH. There's the sell signal right there at the dot. In fact, it comes at right at that. Let's put a, a vertical line there. So right there when it gives me a lower low is where the sell signal is. Yeah. And I don't have anything that says buy. Where yeah. what about the Fibonacci? Let's see what there uh, let's go from this low over here up to there for the lines and then what do we get 95.46 at the at the closest so we're at 99 now and it looks like it's going to 95. yeah um the uh, last one was nvidia and uh you know, when they announced their um, four for one, um, I thought it would be very intelligent to look at what happened Nvidia. to Apple. Hello? Where's NVIDIA? NVDA? Do I have oh, that you, on my you, list? I think you misspelled it as VDA. Uh, 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 that's my dyslexic moment. Exactly. I, was gonna say, I do that sometime when I'm typing. <laughs> I do it a lot. Yeah. So anyway, my oh, thought on this was, you know, they, they announced a they announced a split. And I said to myself, well, you know what? They're a tech firm and so is Apple. And so why not take a look at what Apple did uh, right after they announced their split? And I did mm -hmm. some measurements with the Fibonacci numbers. And I came mm -hmm. up with uh, from 570, it's possible that we'd go up to 834 on NVIDIA using these Fibonacci numbers and, and the way Apple behaved. Mm -hmm. I just took some measurements and uh, this was at 570 and uh, lo and behold, uh, it's shocking, but it went right up to that. Uh, it did an exact kind of move that Apple did. And then yeah, after true. Apple did that move, it corrected quite a bit. If you recall, it went to like 145 yeah. and then it corrected right. all the way back to 103. Are we looking at a potential correction here in NVIDIA? Uh, because they, oh, uh, yeah, they did look. their split. The vertical now. line I just drew. Mm -hmm. Oops, wrong time frame. Go back to daily. I meant to grab a pointer. So we've got a vertical line back here. We've got a buy signal goes up, 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 up. We we'll ignore the short term sell signals. We've got a one, two, very big three 
probably will go on to 843, so another nine points mm -hmm. or so. And then we've got to have a four wave. Now the four wave, this is just a straight down two, so the four could be very sideways. I mean, we could we could just kill ourselves with boredom as it goes sideways. Uh, and it won't be a cell signal, but it won't be a buy signal either. So but we'll like uh, we we, we got then, a we got a we got a twenty or thirty percent drop in Apple after they uh, actually did the split, and mm -hmm. I'm I'm wondering uh, if this thing were to get a so unwind. Get yeah, six eighty five is the projection I'm seeing on that. That's what I was saying, and that's a heck yeah. of a lot of potential. Uh, um on the puts on the put side if that were to occur yeah. uh, the risk reward ratio certainly would be worth a, a peak the risk yeah and like i say yeah using common sense as your guide everybody bought it pre-split and so who's left to buy it now you know yeah, in other see, words here, uh, here's the horizontal line here's the top of that move right, yeah. right there yeah and so you can't go lower than that if my count's right but it could go as low as that, but I, I still think it's a complex four coming up. And when you say a complex four, you're talking about a choppy activity with maybe very, a bias to the downside? Very choppy with, with a small bias to the downside, not a big one. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's a great, and it's a great, it's a great company. You're kind of bad mouthing Santa Claus when you bad mouth NVIDIA because this thing just yeah. keeps giving, you know? Right. And do we have, what is we have on NVIDIA? We've got uh, 16 cents or, Mm, it's, eh. growth is 10 percent, which is nice but it, it really doesn't yield anything worth no no this is a oh, uh, yeah. this is a growth story this is a growth story and it's a, right. and a highly valued growth story at that you know yeah yeah Not great, um pull back though and then buy so your pullbacks yeah exactly especially with good companies mm-hmm um let's get uh, you know sometimes uh it's good to look at a sector and you can get an idea of what the sector's doing and some of the sectors you know that people are very interested in uh one is uh if maybe we could use what they call an etf like xle uh and and mm -hmm. another one is uh oih and that gives you the um, oil companies and it also gives you the exploration and producing companies so they're both very interesting because uh, some people think this OIH is going to triple uh, over time and XLE is, you know, your big companies like Chevron and mobile. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look I'm at gonna, energy. I'm going to pick this one up real quick first, Jim. Somebody just asked how oh, high they asked I think the queues will go. Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, that's a good one. Yeah. There's the queues. Yeah. Um, have to look at this on a weekly. I, eesh, it's got to pull back a little bit. Well, it doesn't have to. I mean, I thought... I thought there was an event that would trigger a, a mass exodus from the stock market a few years ago, but it didn't. The stock market went straight on up after that. So who knows? You know, I, I just always have to be ready. So yeah, put, you, you, you can't it, let your opinions override the numbers because then you're going to lose a lot of money. Yes. Cannot let the numbers. Uh, I can't your opinions to overrule the numbers. You're right, because it just leads you nowhere. It, it, you know, that it. I'm about making money, not about being right. Yeah. Okay. Well, like what I, did you ask me? The XLE. Uh, the the two energy ones that people kind of keep an eye on. One is XLE, okay. which is and, the, and, and the other one is SLB. OIH. Yeah. The other one's what? The other one's OIH. OIH. Okay, I got them both on there. All right. So if we look, it says bearish double down on the S XLE. And let's put it back on daily. I don't know why it says that. That's, that's a, it's got a signal, but it doesn't have lower lows. So you see, it's got a short signal from right here. Right. It's been losing value. Well, yeah. But if you, if you so look right at there's it, there's the short I, signal and it's gone yeah. down from 56 to 51 on that signal. You know, one of the things I really like to do, Jim, is uh, scale all of these charts on the same scale. Yeah. You know, so that so we've got uh, Tesla that costs whatever it does, 600 or something. And we've got this one that costs 56. If you put them on the same scale, these things just look straight across compared to something that's really tradable and goes 100 point swings at a time. 
Can you explain the difference uh, in skill? Because I was uh, listening to Robert Prechter. Uh, he had a speech in the beginning of the year, and he was saying uh, to get the right uh, counting or whatever, you need to use the arithmetic scale versus some yes. other type of scale. And since right. you're a math person, what is the difference between what's the first of all, what are the two scales and why would all you right. uh, go with arithmetic? It's a, a very good question. Let's bring up the Dow, dollar INDU, and then let's put it on weekly. No, let's put it on monthly. And then let's squeeze it up. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze bars, I call these. Now, see, that looks like it just goes sideways forever and then straight up after that, right? Then if we go, to, I'm gonna have to unsqueeze it to get a hold of those prices, I think. Okay, here, let's see. Data, edit symbol, monthly, scaling, and here are the two scales linear, which is arithmetic, and semi log. Semi log means you can't convert time into a logarithmic, but you can convert price. So it's only half logarithmic. But then we do that. Now look what happens. We don't have any huge run up like we did on the other chart. Right. This really puts dollars against dollars so that the, the dollars back in 1935 are, are I want to say massaged, but they're, they're mathematically rescaled so that this is dollar against dollar instead of back here when it was the Dow was $40 and up here where the Dow is $34,000. See how different that chart looks? Sure, I'm a lot different. Yeah, so it's it's just the logarithmic paper versus scalar, arithmetic, or linear, all the same idea. Now, if we go back and edit the symbol again, and we get the scaling, and we take symbol like off, all of a sudden, we think we've got this, and we don't. It's just like I said earlier, when, when I paid $900 40 years ago for 10 pages of paper. Right. Nine, $900 40 years ago was a lot of money. Yeah. It's not as much now. I mean, it's still a little bit of money, but it's not, it's not going to break you. $900 every seven years doubles, you know, it's got a lot, two or 3,000 now. Right. So does that answer your question about logarithmic? Oh, definitely. I, and it's, uh, it's clear that if you were doing counting of any type, the one form, the one form would uh, have a totally different result than the other. Absolutely. Yeah. And that was his point. His point is if you did it this other way, you would think this is the third wave. But if you do it in the arithmetic, mm -hmm. you can see it's not. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I've got a new, a new piece of data that I'm working on. I haven't imported it into TradeStation yet, but I, I downloaded a spreadsheet of gas prices back to the 30s. Uh -huh. And I'm going to make uh, import that into TradeStation and do a price of gas, price of gas at the tank versus the price of oil. That'll be interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah. Now you definitely focus on the shorter term, and um, I was wondering, but your mathematical background and your and your sophistication here uh, can be used for any time scales. Um, I just to, this is just a question. Um, Prechter was going over, going back to like you know the 1700s, and he was counting and doing this lovely mathematical formula, and he's no dummy. Um, no, he's definitely not. Right. And so he mathematically had plotted out that A, uh, commodities totally bottomed last year in March. And mm. so far, that's been a very good assessment. Uh, B, he says that his conviction that interest rates will be going higher uh, and that the stock market will peak in 2021 is 90 percent. Wow. He feels a 90 percent confidence level. And he counted out um, some type of a way where um, a major, major high point in 2021 20, uh, would occur uh, with a very sharp break. And then, of course, go on their merry, merry way. But some in type of... Or... No, well, let's go over one at a time. He, he, he had a very high confidence level. I, I just tried to put a couple of things in and I don't, I don't have a data feed for some of the... He, he was using stuff. the CRB index. And the commodity, he did not have as much confidence as he was extremely confident, he thought, in the bond, uh, meaning the interest rate, um, mm -hmm. and also in the stock market. So let's just okay. start with the uh, stock market. Do you see anything in your mathematical work that would indicate that we could see a major high point in 2021 that would lead to a very significant drop 
And when, when I say significant, I mean, he's talking about, you know, like a March of last year type job. Oh, really? Let's bring up a longer term chart. Then. Okay, one, two, and oh, this is a monthly. Three probably goes to there. Strange kind of fourth move here, winding around and then up to the fifth. That could easily be ABC down, couldn't it? That really could be. And we've got horizontal line all the way down there at the minus 61.8 Fibonacci. Uh, let's see if we do a Fibonacci, where's this price retracement line? From here to here. Um, you know, that, that ABC could take us down to from 4,300 down 29.83, I think that's it. Yeah. And I think that so type a of a drop move. is about a six, uh, I think that's a 38.2% drop, which yeah, is, it is. It is. And that would be scary for people, wouldn't it? It certainly would be. And it, and it doesn't uh, happen overnight generally. So, you know, uh, keeping your eye out for some kind of a deterioration uh, is not a terrible uh, thing to do. No, no, certainly not because yeah. it does happen. I was yeah. short for the crash of 87. And I made a million dollars in one day. So those kind of drops do happen. And they're a really fun thing when it's happening. Yeah, exactly. The problem, the problem was getting out of the trade. Oh, because I'm sure. yeah. I was a novice trader in 87. I mean, I've been trading for six years, but I still think that's novice. And I called them and, and you had to call the floor of the exchange back then. I had a trader on the floor. And so I would call my trader. And he couldn't even talk to me. He just kept saying, not held, not held. Yeah, 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 yeah. I Fast said, what's market not condition. held? What's yeah. not held? I don't know. <laughs> and he would hang up on me. Not held responsible. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and there's no internet to look it up. There's yeah. no way to find. So I started calling people. And I called Larry Williams. I said, Larry, because he lived down the street from me at the time. And now he lives in the Virgin Islands. But he said, yeah. uh, that means they're not responsible for your trade. If it goes to yeah. it barrels on down below or above your, your what you think you know i don't yeah. i'm not responsible for what bill you get i'm like yeah. oh that doesn't sound so good so i just on on tuesday after the 506 point drop i just started buying everything i could get my hands on yeah 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 but uh yeah the setup is there uh because uh, maybe it one really of the reasons is. Yeah, maybe one of the reasons uh, th that we're at 120 on the uh, 10 year is because the Fed realizes that we need to have liquidity because of the real estate market, uh, the sales are drying up because mm. the prices are so high. So they the only high. way, yeah, the only way you can stabilize real estate at high levels is to drop the interest rate so that the payment, which most people really focus in on the payment rather than what they're paying for something. It's a crazy mentality, but it exists. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as the payment remains really low, you know, they can get rid of these higher price homes. I mean, you're in uh, San Diego County and all. I mean, very that's, high the, price. that's yeah, that's the high, that's the poster child of high price, you know? Yeah, it is. Well, you yeah. know, we pay for the weather out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, used in, I used to live in, I used to live in Corona Del Mar and those prices oh, yeah. are just off the chart. Yeah, they are, they are. Yeah, I had a house in Del Mar looking, overlooking the ocean, 6,000 square feet of ocean view. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, mm, I, you know, California houses just continue to get more and more expensive. Oh, they really do. And they we really have do. too many people in San Diego. When I first moved down here, I used to have a bumper sticker. This is 50 years ago. And there were 90,000 people in San Diego at the time. And I used to have a bump, bumper sticker that said, welcome to San Diego, now go home. <laughs> <laughs> Now, now you should have got, five of them on your car. Yeah. <laughs> now we've got three million population. But not enough to keep your chargers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was, many... that was kind of hard to take, actually. Yeah. 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 But let's um, do something before we move further on this one chart. I have yeah. it on a monthly chart, right? Let's okay. go back and do this. Let's put it on a semi-log and see what that same correction looks like. It's still a correction. See that? Yep. It's still a correction, but it's not as awful. Right? Can you see yep. that? Yep. 
Yeah. Well, okay. That's your equity. What about the debt market? Uh, TLT would be a proxy for the 20 year bond. Is there a uh, collapse in price coming there? Because he's looking for a very sharp rise in interest rates, which would have really only come from either an economic slowdown or a default problem. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got a trend line going like this, kind of, and I'm just sketching here. Trend line going like that, kind of. So it makes sense to drop back down to whatever this price is, 120. Yeah. And then go on up and hit the channel again uh, at uh, 190 by that time. Yeah. So there could be some significant volatility uh, in the next 12, uh, in the next 12 That's months. a nice volatile ETF there. I mean, look how it goes up and down through that channel. Yeah. Well, in the TLT, when uh, the, we're, the world's coming to an end in March, uh, yield dropped to, <laughs> they dropped to a half a percent, which was the direct uh, opposite of Volcker at 16%. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people were thinking that uh, the culmination of the Volcker hike to 16% ended with the move we saw last March. And that looks like a reasonable statement. Uh, that when I was 28 years old and, and I had my software company, and so I was actually working for a living. Um, interest rates were at 17% and my income tax was 63% of my income. Hmm. Times have changed, haven't they? Right. And so is the debt level. Yeah. But I, I mean, you know, why don't we put why don't we put that in a chart? I don't know how to do that without importing a bunch of data, which would take a while. But if we were to put uh, the national debt on a chart that, and then put the scale on logarithmic, wouldn't that be interesting? Yeah, yeah. I because, did have a chart yeah. once that was uh, the Dow divided by the price of a new Ford on a yearly basis since 1910. It was flat, completely flat chart. Because yeah. if you if you divide your income by whatever it costs to buy something that's fairly standard commodity, like a car, then there's no, it, it, so that's accounting for inflation, right? And accounting yeah. for inflation, there was no move up in the market in 100 years. Yeah, I mean, and we see the S&P, if people want to understand why, the market is fairly orderly in some respects up to about 2000 or 2008. And then since that point, it's gone nuts. It's really correlated to the amount of debt. The national mm -hmm. debt has gone crazy. The uh, deficits have gone crazy and the Fed balance sheet is now crazy. Mm -hmm. So it's really all on borrowed money well, and, the, uh, and well, borrowed the money. The balance sheet has to be crazy right now. It has yeah. to be because yeah. that's the only way we can get out of this crisis that we're in. Yeah, and nobody's nobody's told me about how high inflation is right now, and yeah. I know that when I go to the grocery store, it's really inflated from what it was last March. Yeah, and now the rates are going lower, so you got the same kind of environment that set up the Volcker high interest rate deal, which was when uh, inflation went to ten percent with uh, Jimmy Carter, and then mm -hmm. basically the interest rates were at three percent, and that big negative differential caused whatever that caused. And now we're getting that negative real interest rate getting wider. And so it'll be very interesting the next 12 months because um, again, uh, these prices are extremely extended with extremely high valuations. What isn't the normal PE ratio 15 on the S&P and now we're up in the 2025s area. Oh, so I if don't that, even if, know. That's a fundamental thing I never look at. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I do because I saw what China did. But you, you know, must one be of the, a historian. Yeah, I am. And I'm, I'm interested in everything. I, you know, I'm, in, I'm a very much of an information uh, uh, sponge. You're an informationaholic, <laughs> are you? Yeah. But again, yeah, no. I'll, just, I'll just get to a little sidebar there. Um, the valuation of the Chinese stock market was very, very high. And in the last six months and 12 months, it has contracted. Mm -hmm. And that contraction has caused stocks like Alibaba. Why don't you put Baba up there? B-A-B-A. -B -A. It's one of the leaders um, of their stock exchange. And you'll see that the stock went let's, from like 320 down to like 200 and they're still making money. Let's take but, it off of this. How about if we take it off? Uh, yeah, let's go back to arithmetic. Back to, yeah. Yeah. And then let's give it back to a daily chart. Aha, uh -huh. then we squeeze it up, squeeze bars. 
Now, these people continue to make earnings, so it's not like they're losing money, but the stock has gone down from 320 down to uh, 200. One of the reasons, obviously, there is a risk uh, because they're clamping down on all the country uh, companies, but they're also clamping down on valuation. And Ooh. so if valuation were to compress, Who's yeah. Who's they? Oh, they, I'm sorry, the Chinese government. Okay. Yeah, the Chinese government is put, you know, they, they uh, fine these companies now, and they're concerned about the data being shared, et cetera, et cetera. And they're concerned, like Didi came out um, with a new offering, and then uh, the stock has lost a ton of value because they took it off the app uh, store. Mm -hmm. right. Because they didn't right. like the way they were handling their data. But the bigger picture, as I see it, is, is that the valuations are compressing. And that is the big risk, I think, in our stock market is because we have very high valuations and these companies may continue to make money. But if the valuation goes back to more normalized, then obviously that would be a weight on top of the indexes. Yeah, yeah. Look now that's all, I like you say, that's all fundamental. You know, the, the, when the numbers show you that that's happening, you'd be more interested. I don't turn the TV on. I don't listen right. to the news. I right. don't. I don't watch any fundamental reports. Everything to me is just math. Exactly. But it's not that it's just math. You don't have to have a PhD in math to do this. You have to be yeah. logical. Just yeah. that's it. Just logical. Also, people who are really good at trading are artists mm -hmm. using the patterns in the charts. Mm. They visualize. So yeah. 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 Well, and I have both sides working because I've got photography and math and charts look like pictures to me. I could, I, I just read them, but look right. what that did. I've got a, I've got a long-term trend line here under price and it just ducked down under there just now. One, two, three. And it went down below where the four wave would have been, which is not a good sign. Yeah. You no, know, we just had a comment that under 214 was kind of a breakdown, huh? 2014. I just broke I'm, up the uptrend line from 2014. So 2014 is. I mean, I'm yeah, right. Go on a weekly chart to do that. It says the question was it just broke the uptrend line from 2014. Right Bob, there you go. Right. So I'd have to look at a weekly chart to do that. And where's 2014? I don't even have that much data on here. Uh, settings. How about 90 years back? No, I still don't have it. I don't know. Doesn't show me the data. So I don't know how to get back to 2014. Let's see. That's it. That's all I can do. And still, and because it, it broke these lines and it and it's right there with that, that 50. Is that the 50? No, that's the 200. So it's, it's just now breaking the 200. You remember what happened in the, in the Japanese market years ago when this, kind of, and everybody was writing books about how the Japanese were gonna take over and there was this enormous push to learn Japanese. And now the book I just finished reading was called The China Dream. And it's about how the Chinese are gonna take over. Right, it's always somebody. But remember what happened to the Japanese market. Right, it's just, right. I think the Chinese are front running that. Pro I think the Chinese are front running that problem by, uh, you know, getting uh, their valuations down and by uh, getting regulations up. And they're, they're yeah. front running. They're front running uh, the problem that Crash. Japan had. And, yeah. uh, you know, the uh, the other two areas that people kind of keep an eye on that had big runs that look like they're rolling over. Can you put up IYT? That's the transportation average. IYT. Mm -hmm. And the other is the Russell 2000, which is IWM. And they were leaders for quite a long time, but I'd be interested to see if you're getting sell signals on those. Mm, yeah, that's, this is, you want to look at weekly or daily? Uh, both, I guess. Well, let's look at the weekly. Let's get Here's a vertical this. line here and yeah. it went short. Weekly is probably in better shape. Higher, higher, than higher, than higher, 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 higher. Yeah. There's a lower price, but it's too late. Higher, higher, higher. And right. There's the sell signal. That's on a weekly. So we got a sell signal, I don't know, eight or nine weeks ago, something like that. Right. Uh, um, this is transports, right? Yeah. And IWM is your Russell 2000. Let's look at this one real quick. And it has the same sell, sell signal. Yeah. No, this thing looks like it's uh, ran out of gas. 
<laughs> so to speak. Yeah. What was the other one? Uh, IWM is your uh, Russell 2000. A lot of people think if uh, when the transports give it up, that's a sign that they're giving up on the economy a little bit because they're giving up on the railroads and they're giving up on UPS and FedEx and all those. You know, mm, I disagree with that. I think that the transports in, in this, you know, the Dow theory says that you watch the transports against the Dow. Right. If they don't, you know, et cetera. Um, I don't believe in that anymore. And I know as a market technician, I'm supposed to because it's the theory that we're taught. Right. But I think that the NASDAQ, the Dow, and the S&P are the ones that we're trying to coordinate now. And yeah. the Dow is just going sideways doing nothing right at this moment, you know. Right. And the other right. two are up. So now is the Dow going to pull the other two down or are they going to pull the Dow up? It, of course, we wait and see. Yeah, and we'll like, know soon enough, right? Yeah. Like this one. Look at those lines. We're in another channel. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Yeah. Unresolved. So it would have to break out uh, whatever this line is at. That would have to break at 237 to the upside or 215 to the downside to make a change in an otherwise nothing market. And what is this one? I uh, share this is the Russell price. 2000 is small Russell. caps. They're, they're the small cap stocks. Yeah. And they have a lot of energy in there too. And they have a lot of the reopening stocks in there too. Um, so, you know, that's interesting. I think uh, obviously we've covered a whole bunch of different material here. Um, do you want to uh, let people know exactly again how to get a hold of you and uh, take sure. it from there or? Sure, we can do that. Uh, I was going to ask questions. If, what is and, and then you want to have a little question. You want to have a question and answer? The RSI and what was the name of, of above the RSI? Well, there's I've got two RSIs. The one above it that's red and gold uh, uh, histogram is my DMA histogram, DMA underscore H. Uh, and that's where I read all my signals. What's the red dot at the right side tells me current price. So that while I'm if I'm watching this, you know, on a one minute chart like I do. See, it's green now. That's because the last price just went up. And I, this is just, I just cleverly call this one current price. So green is where the current price is on this one minute chart, but it's not trading. So let's look at ESU21 is the E-mini contract. And then I also put in uh, most, well, all the indicators that I have for sale, I use in my own trading. I don't, I don't, I'm not in the business of selling indicators. I'm in the business of trading. So if I have it, it's because I use it. And let's see, if we use this one, day sessions, this one's kind of, I, I keep this on all my charts, really. ESU is, oh, here, let me show it. There, see how the colors change as the session changes from night to day? So in the night session, I've got green and magenta bars. And then I can look at the chart and go, aha, that's where the morning started because they turned to blue and red. Things like that, that and, and like this current price indicator that goes out at the end of my chart, red dot on this one now, it just changed from green to red. So it just moved down. I also have another indicator that I keep on all my charts that annoys the heck out of my family. And I call it Bing Text. And if I add that to the chart, you'll be able to hear every single tick of the market. You hear that? Mm -hmm, sure. That's a bong. Bong means it just went down. So I have a bing and a bong and a click. So bing means it's going up. Bong means it's going down. Click means that was a sideways trade. So it takes every single tick of the market, hence its clever name, bing ticks, and uh, makes a sound. That way I can tell if it's trading right this minute, which it isn't. Uh, it doesn't open again until what, 1300 or something? Uh, I mean, 1,500. Um, yeah. So it's not doing anything at the moment, so we're not hearing any sounds, but I keep that on. And I can also tell from that, and, and I'll give this indicator free to anybody who wants to contact me. You have to have trade station or multi-charts, but I'll give you bean ticks for free, just email me. Um, 
and with the, along with the sound file. So you can choose from 20 or 30 different sounds. And it tells me how fast the market's moving and the direction that it's moving. So right now I hear no sounds, it's not moving. And if it's going really fast and it's going down, it's gonna go bong, 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 bong. So I, I don't even have, I, I just listen to it and I know what I'm, whether I'm supposed to look up or not. Now, how do people get these indicators uh, that you're looking at? Uh... They're on Money Mentor. You go up to order form and you, or products, either one. Okay. And you pull down, you could hear, let's see. I got you. So pe cool? people would subscribe to get these. Yeah. 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 So, so you can go to products and services and look them all up that way. Uh, the indicators and strategies. So it's, you know, everything that I offer and they're all, there's pictures of all of them. So you can see there was the DMAH and, you know, if you want to buy it, then you just click buy now and it'll take you over to the product, the order form listing. And would it like, after you bought the product, uh, would you get it's a chart that has the red and blue dots and everything else? Yeah. Oh no, the red and blue dots are separate. Each of the indicators is a separate indicator. So let's go back to, to uh, here. So you can see that the DMA is, is one indicator. Mm -hmm. DMAH is another indicator. Uh, the DMA strategy is another separate indicator. They're, they're all just one thing at a time. And if you want the spreadsheet, it's like that. Uh, this crossover shows you real easily where all the crossovers are on the DMA. Uh, there's sunny bands. That's probably the most expensive thing I offer because it's the most tradable. PHW with the dots. Here they're yellow. Here they're blue and red. There's, you know, so it goes on. A pennant finder is a fun one. When you're looking for areas, and I keep this on my charts too. When you're looking for areas of congestion, you want to see where it's where you're going to buy if it or it breaks out or sell if it breaks down. Mm -hmm. You see the red horizontal line at the top of the pennant. If it breaks out above that line, I'm the buyer. So it just tells me instantly, you know, what is this? ADX, I have a smooth ADX that's smooth with my DMA equations. That's so it's less volatile than the standard ADX. Likewise with the smooth RSI, uh, what's that one? Oh, I have one called all averages. And, and if you want it, if anybody wants all averages, I'll give you the strategy and the indicator both for the price of one. And what it does is it has five or six different averages in it. So if you were trying to figure out which is better, a weighted moving average or a harmonic moving average or a simple moving average, all you have to do is often optimize the parameters that'll tell you which moving average to use. So you don't have to try a whole bunch of different things. It's just all in there. So you just get in here and go optimize. This one's and, fun. And to get all these indicators, you have to have trade station, right? Or multi charts. I got you. I got you. In fact, you can even click down to vendors and if you want to buy multi charts, contact those people. If you want to buy trade station, contact those people. Okay. So I have a lot uh, of stuff. I'm really proud of this brand new website I spent a year designing. Yeah. And programming. Well, there's a, obviously there's, there's a lot of great information here to be had. There's no doubt about it. Well, I try to fill it up with. Um, as much as possible. So, well, let's go back to that for just one second. Let's go to resources, reference. See, resource, oh, this is part of my bookshelf, by the way. Uh, so it goes, you know, every, I, I'm just now filling this back. Oh, uh, we're, we're still seeing your chart. Uh, you if are? you wanna sh Yeah, we switch the- to share and unshare again? Yeah, do that. The, yeah. yeah. Stop share, go back to here, and then where's the start share again? Uh, you have to move your cursor around until you find the the zoom share screen menu. Yeah, mm, share screen. we're gonna go to which one? Here. Now, can you see it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is alphabetical links to fun stuff that I use in my own life, and I'm busy. You can see, I only got down to E, but you know, you want a futures contract. You can't figure out what the what the symbol was. Click and there, there you go. Um, you want to, I, I want to color thing. I have a function that I call SJH colors. So if I want to do something besides the standard trade station colors, I've written a function to do any color I want. So I look up the color palettes and I say, okay, what color do 
I want today? You know, and you've got all these colors you can choose from. And it gives you the RGB values and the hex values and, and a name. Uh, what else do I have under resources? Reference, uh, area codes. You want to know, <laughs> you know, it's just stuff that I use and I know other people want to use it too. If I do, you must. So I've, I've just, it's a, a wealth of resources. Sure, sure. If you want to read some of my old articles, look at that. There's a bunch of articles. Articles by other authors. I've got Robert Prechter in here. Some, oh, that one's broken. And that's one of the things I want people to do for me too is try to try to break my website and send me an email so I can fix it. Okay, let's stop share again real quick. Go back to this chart. Uh, where do I share screen? And where's the presentation? It's right there. See it? You see it, guys? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So I still want people to ask, tell me what book they want. Can anybody type into the chat session? Is anybody still there? Tell me which yeah. books are right next. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to click you, David here. To Anaka. Thank you, Jim. And audience, thank you for attending. Is there? Oh, there. That's what you asked me about 10 minutes ago. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and people should definitely get in there and uh, and find out how you can help them because there's a lot of different ways to uh, to get educated here and uh, a lot of ones that look very, very good to me. And one of the things that by talking to me, you get automatically is 40 years worth of experience trading things that make money. And I've read over 400 books on trading now and I can basically repeat them verbatim. So you don't want to have to read 400 books, ask me questions. Yeah, I mean, I found out, I found out some things, uh, like we said about the arithmetic uh, uh, question yeah. I had, and that, to be honest with you, one of the biggest things I've gleaned today out of all the great information is that sixty forty on the uh, RSI. I think that's, uh, I think that's a real gem. It is, it is. But I give that credit to that for Connie Brown, to Connie Brown. She's well, wherever Connie is, thank her for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kudos to Connie. Kudos to Connie is right. She's another yeah. really smart cookie. All right. Well, everybody, uh, again, and uh, the people that are going to watch it uh, on YouTube, uh, there's the email address for Sunny. She's giving uh, a lot of good information and she's giving an opportunity to get introduced to herself at little or no expense. Uh, so that's a great deal, too. So uh, that I uh, didn't yeah. you uh, say something about that ninety seven dollar uh, deal. Ninety seven dollars for you're an hour. Beat, yeah, you're not going to beat that. No, you're not going to beat that. You're not going to beat that. So lawyers uh, charge more. Well, lawyers charge four ninety five an hour nowadays. And that's what I charge for an hour to teach you actually how to make money instead of to spend your money. And that's only if you have two broken arms and two broken legs, and they're going to say they're going to take 50% of the money that comes in, right? The personal <laughs> exactly. injury guy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, that's, uh, that's it uh, for me today. I'm going to uh, sign good. out. You, Thank you, you so much. Yeah, you bet. And I think we should do great. this more often because like I say, I think, uh, with a little bit more advanced notice, a lot more people could take advantage of this. So we'll uh, we'll definitely try to do this again because I found it I'm very, willing. very yeah, it's perfect. So I used again, to do this on TV up in Los Angeles every week. You remember Richard Saxton? Oh sure, up in Channel yeah. Twenty Two. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I used to go up there every week and do chart analysis with Richard. Fifteen yeah. minutes was uh, me making a presentation, and fifteen minutes was call in. Yeah, Which yeah, was a lot of fun, and I took my little dog with me. So on the lead-in prior to the close of the market, and when our program was, he'd always say, "Today we have Sonny Harris and Pewter." <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget the legendary Gene Morgan. Oh yes, oh yes. <laughs> he was. Uh, he was. An else, yeah. Legendary, legendary is um, Kennedy Gamage. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. What a what an amazing guy yeah. he. And it David Paul Kane. Kane. What about David Paul Kane, the Beverly Hills yeah. guy from uh, Kennedy and Cabot, right? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Now they, they, that was a great country. station, but they went Telemundo on us, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That was a shame. It was because I liked yeah. that. That was fun. Yeah. It was intimate. It wasn't just a big, uh, you know, 
country cross country it was only for california san diego up to mostly santa barbara LA, yeah. yeah mostly la yeah, yeah. all right thank well i'm out of so here thank yeah you. yeah thank you very much sunny we'll definitely do this again david i'm going to turn it over to you and uh, and we'll talk to everybody down the road all right uh, yeah a ton of great info today so uh thank you to sunny for uh being very generous with her time today and uh yeah we're uh closing in on almost two hours <laughs> so that's great um, a great uh, ton of information for a, a special thursday episode of ayt so uh so Thank just you, a David. quick reminder for everyone be sure to subscribe to timing research on youtube and your favorite podcast app uh, to get instant updates on uh, when i post uh, new episodes you can also just go to timingresearch.com um, there's a post at the top of the page that will become the archive for this event as soon as I can get it posted. And you can also find all the past uh, shows and events there as well. And I uh, just want to thank my uh, guests again for today, Sonny Harris of moneymentor.com and the option professor of optionprofessor.com for moderating. So thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.